Hey YouTube, Do It Yourself Junkie 369 here today, and it is March 10th, 2020. And today's an important day because I am taking delivery on my first RV10 kit. So officially, today is the day that I start my airplane build. For me, some backstory on this. I saw an article in 1997 in Popular Mechanics where they were flying a kit built aircraft by the Zenith Aircraft Company and ever since then I've wanted to build one and originally it was that aircraft. I looked at it, it was aluminum, I thought it was the best thing in the world. Um, kits have come a long way since then. That's uh, 23 years for those of you that are wondering on the map. A little bit under because I think that article ran in August of 97. Since then, I was in the Marine Corps for five years as a helicopter aircraft mechanic dealing mainly with power plants. So uh, until I get to putting the engine in this thing, that won't really help me out any. I went to school for mechanical engineering, graduated in 2012. Uh, back in 2010, I had a short internship at a Boeing aircraft repair depot and the aircraft would come in, they'd get stripped apart, they'd find cracks in the airframe. It was part of my job as one of the interns to design repairs that would then get applied to the damaged airframe to get it back into airworthy condition. So no actual building there, just design work. So other than the degree and knowing how to do engineering drawings and read them is probably not going to provide too much help to me, but I do have some overarching mechanical knowledge, both practical, hands-on through aircraft work and repair, and theory-based classroom learning that would probably give me an edge over the standard builder. And then uh, after getting out of school, I went to work at my current job where I'm a mechanical engineer. Uh, I have my engineer and training certification. I haven't gotten my PE yet. I, I need to start working on that. And sometime during this time while I'm building this aircraft, I also have to finish up my master's degree that I'm working on. So it's going to be real busy and hectic. So uh, if basically, if I can get through this, and I'm planning on trying to do it in two years, which is why the date's so important, then really anybody out there can do it. Uh, as far as hands-on actual aircraft construction, I've gone to Oshkosh. I went to their little four-hour class on metalwork, which included doing some dimpling, doing some countersinking, marking holes, drilling them, putting rivets in them, uh, deburring, so all the basic steps in building the aircraft or the main steps for this type of aircraft anyway. There is some fiberglass involved later as you get near to completing the kit. But it was just a four, short four hour class and I think it's been four years ago now, maybe five years. It's been a while so I've forgotten a lot so I'll be relearning a lot of this. And uh, Vans does make like a, a practice kit which is like a little section of airplane that you can start working on or a toolbox and I wish I had ordered those and had them come in earlier just so I could get comfortable using the tools and also it would be a good opportunity to set the tools up correctly but in this video series I'll go over all that stuff so a quick overview for you guys that don't know what an RV-10 is it is manufactured by Vans Aircraft out of Aurora, Oregon, which I used to live out near there, about six hours away, if you consider that near there. And it was first put into production, I guess, back in 2003. So even before I went and joined the Marine Corps. And I think as soon as it came out, I was aware of it and wanted that as an aircraft. For one thing, it's a four-seat aircraft. And here's a picture of it as I go over some of the specs. So like I said, four-seat. Gross weight is 2,700 pounds. 
Usually the empty weight of a completed aircraft ends up being anywhere from 1,580 pounds to 1,630 pounds, depending on how you build it. So there's a little bit of uh, leeway there, but gross is definitely set at 2,700. That means the useful load of this 4 seat aircraft is anywhere from just over 1,000 pounds to 1,100 pounds, or 1,100 pounds. That means you can stick 475 pound people in it, fill up the tanks, which has a 60 gallon tank capacity, uh, stick 60 pounds of luggage in the back, and fly anywhere from 717 nautical miles out to 869 nautical miles, which here's the uh, Ranger rings overlaid on the US so you can get an idea of just how far that is. Visual representation, picture says a thousand words. And those speeds that you're doing that distance at is anywhere from 153 knots for the larger ring up to 171 knots for the smaller ring. And that is representative of 75% power settings for crews and 55% power settings. So really fast aircraft. But on the other side, it stalls at a very slow 55 knots which is somewhere around 60, 65 miles per hour, which doesn't seem all that slow, but in the aircraft world, it's fairly slow for an aircraft that flies this fast. Um, part of it's due to the aerodynamics of the airplane being great. The other side of it is it has a surplus of horsepower with 260 horsepower like homing I-O 540 engine, which is a horizontally opposed six cylinder for those of you not familiar with aircraft engines and that surplus power really comes into its own when you're getting off the ground take off is usually about 500 feet and you can get a climb rate at gross weight of about 1450 feet per second which is screaming compared to most four place aircraft out there and then landing distance is a short 650 feet so it'll get into a lot of places that you normally need a much slower aircraft backcountry strips are no problem for this and you can if you're flying with two people you could go for a camping trip out somewhere like fishing out in Colorado and pull the back seats out and use the extra space for luggage and then at gross weight, it has a ceiling of about 20,000 feet at that high you'd need oxygen, but you can really turn this into an IFR stable platform for long cross-country trips. And all this is with the 60 gallon tanks, and there are some ways to extend that range by adding on auxiliary fuel tanks. So it's just a quick overview of my background in it, the aircraft that I'm building, I uh, hope you stick along for the rest of the series. I'll be going over next building some EAA workbenches, the types of tools I'll be using, and a quick overview of how to set them up and use them. And down in the description of every video, I'll include a link to my RV10 build tracker, which will be more real time than the videos probably will be. It'll have hours that I've worked on it, what those hours go to. I'm splitting that up between admin, preparation, and actual build, depending on what the task is I'm doing. Like the workbenches are technically a preparation type task, so that time goes under that. I've been working on the cruise performance charts since I've had nothing else to do, so that goes kind of under an admin type task. Ordering the kits, that was time spent that qualifies as admin task. It had to be done, but it's really hard to count that as actual build time. Uh, build time is supposed to be about 2,000 hours, so we'll see what it ends up being. And the halfway point is considered when you have a fuselage put together to sit in. That's kind of what most people consider the halfway point, even though at that point it looks like you almost have a finished airplane. So, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.